We have tried many ways, including chemotherapy, including adding this phosphonates to chemotherapy. Those by itself have not added survival in multiple cancers, including breast cancer, prostate cancers, renal cancer. Those have not added survival, the bisphosphonates, to the standard treatments that we have been giving patients. That needs to be discovered, but there are certain uh, molecules that are being looked at uh, at this time. There's a MET inhibitor, VEGF, vascular endothelial growth inhibitor, known as cabosatinib. Cabosatinib is approved for metastatic renal cancer. However, the amazing thing about this drug is actually it makes the bone metastasis disappear. However, it has not been shown to improve survival in patients with metastatic prostate cancer in a phase three randomized trial, but those bone lesions have disappeared. So there is probably a need of combining two drugs or three drugs to basically improve uh, this in patients with bone metastasis. So we are just in the first stage in the treatment of bone metastasis, which is all palliation. Now we're beginning to see the light to improve survival. And the next step would be to look at markers which can work together, meaning targets and drugs that can work together to help improve survival and basically prevent the consequences of bone metastasis. It is very important. Supportive care is a big spectrum of the treatment of patients with cancer. Besides the active treatment of cancer, which is chemotherapy or targeted treatment, they need all other things that will improve their survival. Supportive care includes patients on adjuvant chemotherapy or adjuvant treatments need the physical therapist, the psychologist, the uh, uh, nutritionist to help them recover from their disease. If they have metastatic disease and they're stable, they need all the resources as far as survivorship issues to help them cope, including financial resources, including other things that help, uh, help them psychologically and emotionally to cope with cancer. If we can target those treatment and improve their survival, we can basically have patients with less bone pain. We can use less bone uh, less pain medicine, which is all palliative, and patients are often gro groggy, dizzy, constipated, and uh, have actually minimal, uh, minimal ability to move around because of these treatments. There's a lot of studies that are ongoing, and one of the studies uh, we are currently doing is actually looking at how, uh, what additional factors are important in the bone microenvironment. So we're doing actually in patients with metastatic prostate cancer, two biopsies, one prior to treatment, another one after treatment to study what changed during the therapy for prostate cancer. Of course, we just did it on one drug, but it needs to be duplicated in multiple drugs so we know the genome, we know the metabolomics of the cancer, and what other things enhance the growth of the bone metastasis. In addition to that, with this bone metastasis, we will, uh, bone biopsies from bone metastasis, we will be able to grow mouse sinographs, which are very important in trying to help us understand how this would behave possibly in humans. Standard of care should be offered, which is very important if they have Bone pains with prostate cancer, they have to be offered radium-223 because it improves survival and long-term can improve their symptomatology as far as bone pains. They should be offered bisphosphonate, they should be offered or rank ligand inhibitor, denosumab, because these have been known to prevent skeletal-related events. That's the bottom line. The other ones are still ongoing and need to be studied how we have to combine the different treatments to improve morbidity and possibly mortality in our cancer patients.